Hello everyone, uh, my name is Jared and this is Corinne and we're from a place called Fallen Timbers Environmental Center. Uh, today we're here at our pond to explore this ecosystem and see what kind of animals are living inside of it. An ecosystem is basically an area of land that animals live. To explore this area, we want you to first think about what kind of animals you predict might be using this ecosystem to survive. So Corinne, prepare an activity for you to do that. So for our first activity, I want you guys to think of those animals that live in the pond or maybe just use the pond to bathe or use it for drinking water. And when the worksheet pops up on the screen, I want you to pause the video and draw those different animals that you can think of. So now that you have filled out the worksheet, some of the things that you might have drawn are a frog, or a turtle, or things that just use the pond for drinking water, like a deer, or a rabbit, or some things that live in the water their entire life, like a fish. But one thing that you guys might have forgotten is a macroinvertebrate. So macro means that these animals are large enough to see with your human eye. And invertebrate means that these animals, instead of having the skeleton on the inside of their body, they actually have it on the outside of their body. So they're really crunchy on the outside and gooey on the inside. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go into the pond and look for these animals. And we're going to see what we can find and then we are going to show them to you. Now that we've collected these organisms out of the pond, Jared's going to go inside and give you guys an up-close look at these animals and go over the life cycles of them. Hello everyone. So uh, we just got back into the nature center. Corinne and I took the animals that we found in the pond and we separated them into petri dishes. Petri dishes are kind of just these little circular containers. Um, once we got them in there, we gave them a little bit more water so that they're comfortable while we're looking at them um, after that. We took some pictures of them so that you can see them up close um, and I'll cycle those pictures through this video right now. All right, so you can definitely see that we have a ton of different animals using our pond this at this time of year. Um, so Corinne kind of touched on it before. Um, these animals kind of have a unique life cycle. Um, all animals have a life cycle, and the ones that live in our pond uh, definitely need that water body for their life cycle. All right, life cycles kind of just means um, how they start off as babies, they grow up to adults, and how the adults have babies, and that just keeps on repeating. So one that's kind of familiar to a lot of our students um, is like this chicken life cycle here, all right? Chickens start off as eggs, they develop in the eggs, they turn into a baby chick, and once the baby chick grows up to a full-size chicken, that chicken has eggs and it all starts over, and it creates this life cycle. Now, the, the animals that we found in our pond today, they require water to complete their life cycles, all right? So as we go through these, you're going to see the baby animal that'll show up 
um, in the beginning. And it'll be kind of a zoomed in picture from what you saw before. So you get a little better look at it. After that, we are going to um, give you a couple options on what you can guess that animal turns into when it's an adult. All right. When you do that, you'll see my face uh, disappear and a stop sign pop up. Um, and you or your teacher can pause the video so that you have time to make your guess. And then you can move on to uh, the next part where I'll reveal the answer and share a couple facts about how that animal's life cycle um, is unique. All right, so the first one we'll talk about is this guy here. Um, you might be able to recognize this one. Um, and your options for this one, so this animal over here is what the baby looks like. And then your options for the adult form of this baby are this duck, the snake, or the frog. So when my face disappears, you can pause the video and take a guess as to what that animal turns into. All right, hopefully you have made your guess and let's see what this little animal turns into. So this is the animal that you're looking at, and this turns into a frog. So that was a tadpole. So you can look over here that this tadpole um, goes through this frog life cycle and turns into a full-size frog. Um, so frogs start off as eggs. The eggs um, develop into a tadpole. The tadpole develops uh, two legs, and then they, they get four legs, and then um, they turn into a young frog, and then they turn into adult frog, and then those have more eggs. You can see how that continues around into a circle um, until they turn around, uh, turn into an adult frog. All right, the next one we'll go through is this animal right here. So um, what you'll need to do is look at that picture on the left over here and try to figure out what this thing turns into. These are your three options right here. Okay, so hopefully you've made your decision or made your guess on what you think these little animals turn into. Uh, so these were what you were guessing on. They're kind of creepy crawly little things that crawl around in our pond. And these actually crawl out of the pond and turn into a dragonfly. Um, so these are the darner dragonflies. Um, they're a little bit bigger than um, most other species. So you can see that these dragonfly larvae over here they start off in the pond in that picture as an egg. Um, they turn into that larva form right here. They crawl out of the pond and hatch out of their exoskeleton, that crunchy outside of their body, and they turn into full-size dragonflies like you see the one right here. Um, these full-size dragonflies will actually fly around on top of the surface of the pond and they lay the eggs for the next generation of um, dragonflies to turn into larva and then complete this life cycle again. All right, the next animal kind of looks similar to this one. So kind of use your detective skills to think about what the last one looked like, uh, looked like, and then try to figure out what this one's gonna look like as well. So again, this is the baby animal, and you're trying to figure out what it turns into over here. So you have this option, this option, and this option here. Okay, I hope you made your guess. Uh, so this was the animal that you were trying to guess uh, what it turns into when it becomes an adult. Um, and this animal turns into a dragonfly as well. So this is a different species of dragonfly. You can see how they look a little bit different. These are actually called skimmer dragonflies, but their larvas look a little bit different. Um, so they go through the same life cycle process and turn into dragonflies as well. All right. This animal doesn't look like that dragonfly larva too much, but it kind of looks like a small little bug that lives in the pond yet, right? So your options for this one are these animals on this side here. So what does this animal turn into? I'll let you take a guess and start the video once you have it. All right, so what do we think this animal here turns into when it's an adult? 
So this animal actually turns into this uh, damselfly. Okay, so it kind of looks like a dragonfly, but it's not a dragonfly. It's actually called a damselfly. Um, so they're closely related, but not exactly the same thing. But they go through a similar life cycle of the dragonfly. All right, they start off the, as this larva. They go through this dragonfly life cycle or damselfly life cycle using the pond for their eggs. Um, they hatch into a larva and then they crawl out and turn into an adult damselfly. And then these are the ones that we commonly see flying around um, throughout the summertime. Okay. The next animal we're going to look at is this one. So what we found in our pond is this thing right here. And this is kind of a closer up shot of it. Now that might just look like a little stick. But if you look at this picture in the middle here, you can see that there's actually a little bug that's crawling out of there. All right. So that's the animal that we're looking at. I'll talk a little bit more about this animal um, once you take your guess. So these are your options over here um, to guess what this animal turns into when it's an adult. All right. So take your guess. Okay, so what does this animal turn into? This thing called a caddisfly turn, looks like this when it's an adult. Okay, so if you look back closer at that larval form there, um, they actually build their own uh, protection out of a uh, wooden material that they find at the bottom of the pond. And they use their spit that's kind of like a form of a silk, kind of like how um, spiders make webs these animals form these um, cases around their bodies and it kind of just protects them and camouflages them in so that other predators don't eat them. There's another species of caddisfly that builds stone cases around their bodies with little pebbles. Um, so they're kind of a cool animal. Um, caddisflies go through um, a similar uh, life cycle that you can see here. Um, this is the water right here so that you can see um, that half of their life cycle spends uh, they spend their time underneath the water. And then when they crawl out, they hatch and turn into this adult form that you can see right here. All right, so now we have a couple other animals that we're gonna go through that were kind of tricky. Um, we weren't gonna go through their entire life cycle, but we found this animal here, it's called the back swimmer. Um, they lay on their backs and kick their legs and they go swim around all over the pond. But you can see on the left over here that they still have a pretty um, cool life cycle. Um, these animals spend almost all of their time in the water. Um, when we took this animal out of the water, actually, and brought it into the nature center, it flew away. I didn't even know that these animals could fly away before we did this activity. So I learned something today as well. This animal here is called an orb snail. Um, so this is the one that we found. We found three of them that you can see in this picture here. And then this is a life cycle of a snail. It's not the exact same snail, but it would be um, similar. All right, this is one that some students might be able to recognize. We found three crayfish in our pond. Um, we don't always find crayfish, so it was kind of a unique experience today finding some crayfish in our pond. Um, so crayfish start off as eggs. They turn into these little crayfish, and then they slowly develop into this adult form. All of the crayfish that we caught today were in the adult form, um, so we didn't find any of the younger ones for you to take guesses on today. And then finally, we found uh, some of our most commonly caught things in the pond. We find these little minnows all over the place. Um, so this minnow here, we caught four of them. Um, you can see the, the life cycle of the fish over here. They start off as eggs. They turn into larva. They turn into baby fish, which is called a fry, like French fries, but a fry. And then they turn into a fingerling. And then fingerlings turn into young fish. And then they go all the way up to adults and then the adult fish lay more eggs for this life cycle to start over again. You can see that we found a lot of different uh, animals in our pond today, and it's cool to learn about their life cycles. Um, we don't always see these animals down in the pond because how often are you digging in the pond? Not too often, right? Um, but these animals are very important to us. There's a couple different reasons. The first reason is that they're a very, very important part of a food chain. All right, so these animals, uh, these insects that live in the pond, they feed a lot of our fish. So fish rely on these animals um, for food. The other thing that they're uh, important to us for is that these macroinvertebrates are kind of, they're called an indicator species. And now that's kind of like a, a weird term, 
But these, if we study these, these insects and figure out which ones we're finding in our pond, we can actually understand how healthy our ecosystem is by looking at the insects that we find. Because some of these insects can only live in very, very clean water, right? So if we're not finding those, those insects, uh, we might have a problem with our pond and we got to fix our water quality. So if we look at these animals closely, we can learn a lot about um, the pond around us or the area around us. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to use the resources that we have with this video. And I want you to go outside and explore a water body around you. Um, it's pretty simple. You only need like a net um, and maybe a couple other trays to uh, put your insects in once you find them. Something that works out really, really well is you use an ice cube tray and it kind of creates little compartments for you to put all of your insects in as you find them. Uh, once you find them, you can use the dichotomous key that we've attached um, in the worksheet that we'll have with this video. And you can try to identify the animals that you found in your water body. All right, I hope you guys have fun outdoors um, and go search for some of these insects in a local water body around you.